nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, gas prices slashed amidst the appreciation of the rupee. Heads of both institutions say that the consumers will be given the benefit. The main reason for this is the reduction of the global LPG prices and the appreciation of the rupee value. As well as the situation in the country has have a positive effect and a positive impact towards this price reduction. Tea stocks are being slammed at the bores amid the new wage hike decision. Both parties are in conversation to determine which method is best for them. Stocks are in the mix as investor sentiments seem to be in the jitters. And Apple's stock buyback plan worth $110 billion, largest in US history, shares grow 7.9% despite a dip in sales. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka's state one litro gas has reduced liquefied gas prices with effect from midnight today, with an appreciation of the rupee fully passed to customers. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's LAFS gas will also cut liquefied gas prices effective midnight today, corresponding to a drop in prices globally. The price of a 12.5 kilogram litre gas cylinder would be cut to 3,940 rupees from 4,115 rupees, a 175 rupee difference. The 5 kilogram cylinder would be cut to 1,582 rupees from 1,652 rupees, while the 2.3 kilogram cylinder would be cut to 740 rupees from 772. Chairman Mudita Pires stated that the rupee has appreciated somewhat, but not as much as in the previous month, but they have passed the benefit fully to the customers. The main reason for this is the reduction of the global LPG prices and the appreciation of the rupee value. Meanwhile, the 12.5 kilogram LAFS gas cylinder would be cut to 3,840 rupees from 4,115 rupees, a difference of 275 rupees. While the 5 kilogram cylinder would be cut by 110 rupees to 1,542 rupees from the previous 1,652 rupees. The situation in the country has have a positive effect and a positive impact towards this price reduction. Hence, as an organization, as a Sri Lankan organization, we have decided to pass these benefits to the consumer so that the consumer will also benefit alongside the organization. Debt talks with bondholders are awaiting the International Monetary Fund's clarification on how securities provided by the Sri Lankan government will be linked to the country's economic performance analysis. This comes after the Sri Lankan government re rejected an initial proposal made by the bondholders to restructure its repayment. The IMF earlier said that it is not in line with the framework provided to Sri Lanka. State Minister of Finance Shehan Sema Singha said that despite the failure to reach an agreement with the ISB holders, Sri Lanka is hopeful that the talks aimed at reaching a deal will resume as early as possible. It was the bondholder discussions. I think there were various news articles saying that we don't give due importance to the bondholders also, which were all false information, based on false information because we had a, a proper plan laid down. So we were following this uh, plan and then we had uh, discussions with the bondholders that is where we had not come into an agreement yet so we have concluded the first round of talks the pro both the proposals are published the IMF also will assess uh, on uh, the sustainability of Sri Lanka and then we are very confident we will have the second round of uh, discussions uh, open with assistance or with the assistance of our uh, financial uh, advisors and the bond and the advisors to the bondholders but only thing is please i would humbly request don't talk about uh, transparency again on this because the negotiations or discussions will be held on non disclosure agreements so once we come into an agreement the terms and the conditions will be published like the same way we did in the first turn. Does discussions. that mean that the people of this country has no say in it? 
No, I don't agree on that. Because once you have these discussions, you can't have any particular party to benefit out of it. The macro-link bond would initially have a higher haircut, which would decrease if the economy performed better than the IMF expected. IMF have different frameworks on which debt sustainability is assessed for low-income countries and high-income market access countries. There is no prior experience on how a revised DSA methodology for middle-income countries is applied to a macro-linked bond of the sort proposed by the Sri Lanka's private investors. As a result, efforts are underway to better understand how the framework is applied. In a conversation between State Minister of Finance Shehan Seymour Singha and the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Treasury Robert Kaproth, the United States assured that it would reach a deal with bondholders. Seymour Singha met with Kaproth at the Asian Development Bank annual meeting in Tbilisi, Georgia. Seymour Singh also met Yingming Yang, Vice President of the Asian Development Bank, where the two discussed on the new country's partnership strategy from 2024 to 2028 and the ADB's support to the country's efforts to restore macroeconomic stability. Progress of the economy and debt restructuring process were discussed and Yang reaffirmed the strong commitment of ADB to support Sri Lanka. Since the government announced an increase in the salary of estate sector workers by 1,700 rupees, plantation stocks have been hammered at the Colombo Boris. Plantation stocks closed 2.5% lower Thursday after the government announced that companies would have to pay a daily wage of 1,700 rupees per worker. Talawa Kaleti Estate PLC closed down at 112 rupees and 75 cents. LPT Plantations PLC closed down at 120 rupees and 50 cents. Watavala Plantations PLC closed down at 90 rupees and 10 cents. Madhul Sima Plantations PLC closed down at 9 rupees and 90 cents. Kalani Valley Plantations PLC closed down at 74 rupees and 90 cents. Sunshine Holdings PLC closed down at 61 rupees and 60 cents. And Muskelia Plantations PLC closed down at 32 rupees. A top-level Chinese business delegation led by China Association of Small and Medium Commercial Enterprises Secretary and President Ren Xinglei met with Board of Investment Chairman Dinesh Virakodi, the BOI and Port City Colombo officials last week. They discussed investment opportunities in Sri Lanka for infrastructure, e-commerce, EV assembly lines, tourism infrastructure, manufacturing charging stations, renewable energy including solar, hydropower, floating solar, energy storage and environmental protection equipment. The delegation is expected to meet government officials in order to hold bilateral talks and further strengthen relationships between the two nations. We'll go for a short commercial break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Let's take you directly to the Colombo Stock Exchange where mixed signals seem to be the story of the day. The All Share Price Index managed to gain about 0.40%, while the S&P SL20 Index managed to shed about 0.18%. Why the mixed feelings? Well, let's go to Nishara Pereira from Capital Alliance Securities, standing by with a breakdown of today's tradings. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note, achieving a new 52-week high at 12,404 points, marking a 50-point increase from the previous session, with a turnover of 2.4 billion rupees. The SL20 index experienced a slight downturn of 4 points at 3,672. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with significant turnover in central finance, salon coal stores, RIL property, John Keels Holdings and Royal Ceramics. In terms of positive contribution to the All Share Price Index, Bukit Dara, Central Finance, Nations Development Bank, Nations Trust Bank and Asian Hotels and Properties stood out. The top gainers for the day were Industrial Asphalts, Tess Agro, Bay Resorts, Tess Agro Non-Voting and RIL Property. 
Foreign activity saw buying worth 71 million rupees, while sales amounted to 128 million rupees. So how did the markets manage to perform during this week? Ranjan Aratunga from First Capital Holdings has the details. Looking back at the past performance of the SPI, SPI has performed and gained by 0.8% on a week over -week, week basis. While year to date, the SPI has been up by 16.4%. The main reason propelling the SPI to another level during the past few months were identified as increased participation from both high net worth investors as well as retail investors. With high net worth investors taking positions largely in the large cap companies, while uh, retail investors were seen active on small and mid cap as well as penny shares. Meanwhile, looking at why the market was driven during the past few months, the main reason is identified as the positive earnings and the recovery in earnings that we have seen that is coming from the third quarter of last year. Also, due to the steep decline in uh, interest rates and the AWPLR, the alternative, in uh, alternative investment option has also evaporated in the market, thus making the share market the more, more attractive option. Furthermore, there was also interest seeing on uh, the dividend deal shares with high dividends with over 15% uh, returns. Meanwhile, on the foreign activity side, net, for, uh, uh, net foreign outflow of 56 million for the rec was recorded for today, while for the week, the outflow stood at 708 million. The biggest outflows came during the month, mainly on John Keels Holdings, Ceylon Coast Stores, and Brown's Investments, while foreign buying emerged uh, on Haley's. Commercial Bank and ACA. Gold prices moved little in Asian trade today as markets remained averse to the yellow metal before key U.S. payrolls data. The prospect of high longer interest rates put gold on course for weekly losses. The yellow metal was nursing a sharp fall from record highs over the past two weeks as safe haven demand dried up and pressure from U.S. interest rates came back into play. Spot Gold steadied at $2,302.72 an ounce, while Gold Futures expiring in June inched up slightly to $2,311.45 an ounce. The yellow metal saw some price relief as the dollar tumbled in overnight trade. But this only served to limit recent losses in gold as gold traded down about 1% this week. Meanwhile, oil prices increased today over expectations that OPEC would continue production cuts. The international benchmark Brent crude traded at $84.02 per barrel, an increase of 0.42% from the previous trading session's closing price of $83.67 per barrel. American benchmark West Texas Intermediate traded at $79.28 per barrel at the same time, a 0.42% rise from the previous session that closed at $78.95 per barrel. Oil prices plummeted at the lowest levels in the past seven weeks with reduced supply risks in the Middle East due to the ceasefire negotiations between Israel and Hamas, while projected demand dwindled over concerns about the U.S. economy after the U.S. Federal Reserve left the interest rate policy unchanged. Higher prices were, however, bolstered by the possibility that the OPEC and group led by Saudi Arabia and Russia would continue to reduce production. Let's now get you the currency data for the day. The Sri Lankan rupee remained steady against the US dollar at commercial banks compared to yesterday's rates. According to Ceylon Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar are unchanged at 290 rupees and 90 cents and 301 rupees and 40 cents respectively. Meanwhile, at Sampat Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have dropped from 293 rupees to 292 rupees and 50 cents and from 302 rupees to 301 rupees and 50 cents respectively. With that, here's a look at how the rupee tra traded against other currencies today.
commercial break now. Let's have a look at the corporate world when we are back. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Melco Resorts and Entertainment Limited is pleased to announce its partnership with John Keels Holding PLC, the largest listed conglomerate on the Colombo Stock Exchange, in their US dollars $1 billion plus integrated resort development in central Colombo. As a part of the partnership, the integrated resort, which had previously been branded Cinnamon Life Integrated Resort, will be rebranded as City of Dreams Sri Lanka. City of Dreams Sri Lanka will be the first integrated resort in Sri Lanka and South Asia and is expected to be revolutionized luxury hospitality, entertainment and leisure in Sri Lanka, presenting an extraordinary architecture and design and a collection of iconic and unparalleled offerings including 800 hotel rooms, retail food and beverage outlets, mice facilities and much more. Additionally, a wholly owned local subsidiary of Melco has been awarded a 20-year casino license by the government of Sri Lanka. Melco will fit out and operate the gaming area of City of Dreams Sri Lanka and Melco will manage the top five floors of the hotel under its newer brand of ultra high-end luxury rooms, which represents 113 of the 800 total hotel rooms at City of Dreams Sri Lanka. <laughs> As the global trend towards contactless payments continue to surge, Sampath Bank unveils its latest innovation, the Sampath Payband, which is a versatile wearable payment device and the first in Sri Lanka. This groundbreaking solution promises to redefine the transaction landscape in Sri Lanka, catering to the evolving preferences of the younger generation and tech-savvy consumers. Designed with a meticulous focus on enhancing the customer experience and streamlining payment processes, Sampath Payband features a sleek silicon wristband embedded with a payment chip. Seamlessly integrated with Sampath Bank's savings accounts, this cutting-edge device empowers users to effortlessly make transactions with a simple tap or wave at any NFC-enabled POS terminal. Mr. Shiran Kosina, the Assistant General Manager, Card Centre at Sampath Bank, said that with the wearable payment device, they aim to provide a seamless and hassle-free shopping experience, empowering their customers with the freedom to make cashless payments effortlessly. <laughs> The Blooming Breakfast Resto Bar and Cafe unveiled its doors yesterday at the esteemed Arcade Independence Square in Colombo. A notable aspect of this newly established venue is its 24-hour service, a feature that stands out prominently. Offering a wide array of culinary delights, Blooming Breakfast boasts a menu from traditional American fare to the sophistication of Italian and French cuisine, as well as beloved Australian dishes and a selection of Japanese delicacies. It gives its customers the opportunity to enjoy all seven days a week and get recipes from all over the world at any time of the day. Patrons can relish the opportunity to enjoy a global culinary experience seven days a week, with the flexibility to save dishes from around the world at any time of the day. Lanka Oryx Finance PLC moved its branch in Vallavatta to a new and spacious location at Gold Road Vallavatta recently. The newly relocated branch was ceremonially declared opened by the chairman of Lanka Oryx Finance and Group Managing Director CEO of the LOLC Group, Mr. Kapila Jayavardhana. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Mr. Kapila Jayavardhana said that the city of Vallavatta has been a strategic location for them and since establishing this branch in 2009, they have had the privilege of serving customers from various segments and building close relationships with them. The branch will offer its customers various services including fixed deposits and savings leasings and loans and Islamic finance insurance, working capital and factoring. <music> Moving on to a short break, global business news on the other side. This is an Ali Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. 
Hong Kong emerged as a frontrunner in the Asia-Pacific markets today, buoyed by overnight gains in Wall Street. Amid a relatively quiet trading session and without any major local economic releases, investors were looking ahead to pivotal U.S. employment data. Asian stocks reached their highest level in 15 months, driven by the tech sector and Hong Kong stocks. Meanwhile, the yen strengthened, moving further away from its recent 34-year-old lows following a week of suspected intervention by Japanese authorities. With Japan and mainland China markets closed, trading activity in the region is expected to be quiet as traders anticipate the release of U.S. non-farm payrolls data later in the day. Peloton CEO Barry McCarthy, who was tasked in early 2022 to stem the fitness equipment market's slide in sales from the pandemic highs, has quit as the company announced job cuts to reduce costs after posting weak results. Peloton CEO Barry McCarthy, who took the helm two years ago to revive the flagging fitness firm, is stepping down. His departure, announced by the company Thursday, comes as demand for Peloton's connected bikes and treadmills remains weak. Sales have waned since gyms reopened post-pandemic, followed by a cutback in consumer spending due to elevated inflation. McCarthy replaced founder John Foley in 2022 and with business chops honed at Netflix and Spotify, rebranded Peloton into a software-focused company, leaning on its exclusive content to drive subscriber growth. He also cut jobs, adjusted bike prices, and focused on digital subscription plans in an effort to return the company to profitability. But subscriber numbers are losing muscle, leading the company on Thursday to lower its full-year forecast for members by 30,000. Peloton also announced a 15 percent cut to its global workforce on Thursday and said two board members will serve as co-CEOs until a new one is hired. Peloton's stock price initially rose on the news, but soon dropped as much as 16 percent in Thursday morning trading to just under $3 a share. At its peak, Peloton reached $171 a share in January of 2021. Apple's quarterly results and forecast beat modest expectations yesterday as the iPhone maker unveiled a record share buyback program, sending its stock up 6% in extended trade. Apple announced a record share buyback program on Thursday as the iPhone maker revealed a smaller than expected drop in revenue. The company upped its cash dividend by 4% and is buying back $110 billion worth of stock. It's the largest buyback in Apple's history, fueling a jump in shares after hours. Apple reported a revenue drop of 4% to almost $91 billion in the fiscal second quarter. That's not as steep a fall as analysts had predicted. A positive forecast came from CEO Tim Cook. He told Reuters the iPhone maker expects to, quote, grow low single digits in overall revenue in the current quarter ending in June. Wall Street is predicting closer to 1.3% growth, according to LSEG data. The results and guidance suggest the company may be regaining its footing in the smartphone market, despite stiff competition and regulatory challenges. Long considered a must-own stock on Wall Street, Apple shares have underperformed other big tech firms in recent months. It's fallen 10% this year while struggling with weak iPhone demand and tough competition in the Chinese market. Smartphone rivals like Samsung have also introduced competing devices aimed at hosting artificial intelligence chatbots. Though Cook said Thursday that iPhone sales still experienced growth in some markets, including China. He also said Apple has spent more than $100 billion on AI research and development in the past five years, and that the company would be sharing some very exciting things about its AI plans later this year. Well, that'll do from all of us at the Nightly Business Report. Appreciate your company. The Nightly Business Report will be back on Monday at 10 p.m. and see you then. I'm Sina Mayadune. Have a great weekend. Good night.